Hey, 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 ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Brasher here. So, I want you to start by finding the area of these two rectangles. Figure out what the total area is, and then discuss different ways that you could solve that. Okay, so you probably realize that the area of a rectangle is base times height. And when you solved it, you took 12 times 3, and you ended up with 36 units squared. In order to find the total area, since there are two rectangles that happen to be identical, we can take that 36 units squared and multiply it by 2 to get 72 units squared. And that's very similar to what we'll be doing today, except for we need to start recognizing this and seeing this as a three-dimensional object. Today, you're going to learn about finding surface area of a rectangular prism. Now, surface area is the combined areas of all the surfaces of an object. So here we would have to add together the areas of the surfaces, similar to that start problem that we did. Let's look at that example again. So here we have the two rectangles that we had originally found the area for. I'm going to trace them in pink. We found the area for this rectangle, and we found the area for this rectangle. And we said combined that it was 72 square units. Well now, we need to actually look for the area of some other parts of this rectangular prism. We want to be able to find the area of, I'm going to get a different color here, this over here, and this right over here. Now if we look at these shapes, it almost looks like a parallelogram. But we have to realize we're looking at a two-dimensional drawing of a three-dimensional figure. And this shape would more likely look like this. And whenever we try to find the area of this particular shape, we're going to have to again take our base, 5 units, times the height, 3 units. But in a three-dimensional figure, this 5 is often referred to as width. So this would be our width. I'm going to just put equals W, width. 12 would be the length, and 3 would be the height. So when you add the third dimension, we just call it something a little bit different. But when we find this area in this particular one, we come up with 15 units squared. Now we have to also recognize that if we have this rectangle over here, it's going to be exactly the same or identical over here. As a matter of fact, that's actually how we realized that if this side over here was 3, then this side right here would also be 3, the height. So this is an identical figure that would be over here. And when we add those two together, we have a total of 2 times 15, which would be 30 units squared. Now we need to take a look at the other rectangles in this particular illustration. We still have the top rectangle right up here. Again, it looks like a parallelogram, but we have to realize that it's a two-dimensional drawing of a three-dimensional object. And then we have this bottom rectangle right here. And these are going to be identical. So we just need to focus on finding the area of this top rectangle. It's going to look more like like this. And you can see the dimensions again um, in which 
Now we have a base of 12 and a height of 5. But since it's a three-dimensional figure, again, we're calling the base the length, and we're calling the 5 the width. And when we multiply 12 times 5, we get 60 units squared. Now we have to also realize that we have not one of these, but actually um, two of them, because there is the uh, top and the bottom. So we would take this value and multiply it by 2 to get the top and the bottom. So basically, we're taking the front and the back, which were the two you solved in the beginning, the top and the bottom, which are these larger rectangles, and the two sides, and we're adding them all together. When we do that, we get two times the different measurements. First we had 36, then we had 60 for the top and bottom, and the left and right sides were 15. After this, we can realize that 36 was actually 3 times 12, 60 was 12 times 5, and 15 was 3 times 5. When we take these measurements here and we try to illustrate what is actually taking place, we have the height times the length because 3 is the height and 12 is the length. The length times the width, 12 is the length and 5 is the width. And again, the height times the width because 3 is the height and 5 is the width. And this gives us a formula. And this is actually the formula that's used to solve for surface area of a rectangular prism. 2 times height times length plus length times width plus height times width. And when you solve that for this particular one, you would have 30 plus 120 plus 72 which equals 222 units squared. Now, another way that you could do it is by making a net shape. Some people find it to be a little bit easier if they actually make a net shape out of the rectangular prism. I'm going to show you what I mean by using this interactive site. Watch what happens here. The rectangular prism is folded into the three-dimensional shape and then unfolded into the net figure. When we look at this other interactive site, we can actually unfold that rectangular prism into the net shape. So you can see the top, the bottom, the sides, and you can see that they are all rectangular figures here. That's what we need to be thinking about when we're making a net shape. So if we were to unfold this, the dimensions would follow. The top here would be 7 units, and then we could also follow by filling in all of the others. If this is 7 units, then this one would be, and this one would be, and this one would be, and this would be 7 units. Now, 3 units over here is the height. And I could put that right here, or I could put it over here. But I need to realize if that's 3 units, then this here would also be 3 units, this would also be 3 units, and this side over here would be 3 units. And then we have the length is 5 units. Now remember in a 3 dimensional figure that this side, right, this side right over here would actually match up to this side. So we know that 
if this side again is 5 units, then this side would also be 5 units. So would these sides. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that as well. We have 5 units here, 5 units here. And this might make it just a little bit easier to see what is actually taking place when we're solving the surface area of a three-dimensional figure. We also have to remember that when we fold this shape up, I'm going to put a white color on here. If I were folding this area right here, would actually match up with this area, or not area, but the this line right here, or this edge would match up with this edge. So that tells us that three units would be here, and three units would be here. But then all you have to do is find the area for each of the rectangles. Try not to get too focused on all of the stuff that's going on, but just focus on one simple part of the problem at a time. So if I just examine these simple parts, we can make this problem into something very easy. I'm just going to look at this, and I can easily see that the length or base times the height is 7 times 5, and my answer, of course, would be 35 units squared. And I have two of those because there's a rectangle here and the same rectangle exists right here. Then I would focus on the next portion. Maybe this rectangle right here. And when I look at this, this is actually the front and the back. This pink rectangle, or that I'm outlining, would actually be this and this on my three-dimensional figure. And 3 times 5, again, very easy if we take it and break it down, is 15 units squared. But we have two of them. That leaves us with one last rectangle, and that's this one right here in the middle. So if I look at this rectangle, I have 7 times 3, and again, that would be 21. <clears throat> but I have to realize, I have two of these. So this is actually the same as this rectangle down here. I'm going to remove this white line, remove this white line over here, put it there. And that's how you can use a net shape. Here's another one. Why don't you practice using the formula that we developed? Pause the screen, and then push play to see how you did. If you plugged the numbers in correctly, you should have come up with this. Now all we have to do is simplify. I'm just going to copy this and simplify. 2 times 4 is 8, times 2 is 16. 2 times 4 is 8, times 4 is 32. 2 times 4 is 8, times 2 is 16. And when I add all of these together, I end up with my answer, which would be 64 inches squared. Or 64 square inches. Let's try one more. See if you can do it using the other formula this time. Pause the screen and then see how you do. Let's see how you did. Did you plug all your numbers in correctly? Now remember, in order of operations, multiplication and division come before addition and subtraction. So 8 times 5 is 40, 8 times 6 is 48, and 6 times 5 is 30. Then we do what's in the parentheses first. And when we multiply that by 2, we get 236 square feet, 
Well, I hope this helped you out with finding surface area when looking at a rectangular prism. See ya!